here from this kingdom.com for another episode of the this kingdom podcast and as a quick bit of housekeeping before we get going um be sure to hit that subscribe button we recently um changed it around and sort of split up the youtube channel into two separate channels one for parks and collectibles and one for gaming so um be sure to do that so victoria you are there live in Walt disney world right now so if anyone notices some slight different noises and stuff it's because you know cast members might be kind of dropping in or something oh, and on yeah. that <laughs> on that note um have you actually um been around to get to see the uh, volcano bay yet which is, is just kind of opened up this weekend um well as far as volcano bay i mean i was able to listen to the dedication ceremony on my way to work and based on what i was listening to they did their research and that's what i'm very very happy about is that they did their research Yes. Um, I mean, it's opened up. It's kind of an odd one. Um, I think as far as Disney goes, they have got a bit of a thing really now. They've got you know, a lot more competition with this water park zone of them. And more importantly now, um, I think it's kind of going to mean Disney's going to have to up their game with a brand new water park. Oh, absolutely. Like, based on what I've seen of Volcano Bay and based on what I've heard from my roommate who works at um, Universal... They, this is a whole new ballpark. Like, they've definitely stepped it up. Like, they've basically taken the Magic Band and made it slightly better. Mm. So, well, they call it Tapu Tapu there. So, it basically, it, it allows you to do use the virtual queue. So, that means you don't have to wait in line at the water parks. It lets you know when it's basically time for you to get in line. So, you can go off and explore the place. You can... You can go get lunch while you wait. It's 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 a game changer, honestly. Mm. I mean, they had some technical issues over the weekend of like, I think five six hours wait for some uh, some of the attractions. But there was always going to be teething problems and stuff. I'm kind of surprised in some ways they didn't really kind of do what they've been doing with Pandora of kind of letting people in a little bit earlier than just opening it up, which may have come back to bite them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean. I have heard from a few friends that, you know, the wait times didn't really deter them. It gave them more of a chance to explore the park, which they really didn't mind. But I don't know if those technical issues are going to apply, you know, a month from now. So, I mean, hopefully they'll get that worked out within the next few weeks. It usually only takes, like, maybe two or three weeks to get the kinks worked out. Yeah. I mean, the actual park itself, what I've seen so far, I will be honest in the fact that I have not exactly blown away with what i've seen um the volcanoes obviously looks pretty impressive but all the other attractions just look a little bit just like normal water slides i mean i like i said i haven't gone in there yet but i do pass the volcano and some of the water slides on my way to work so i mean <laughs> the volcano itself looks amazing the water slides again i will say they kind of do look like just you know normal rides you would find maybe at like you know blizzard beach or typhoon lagoon but that's me just speaking from what i see yeah. from the outside yeah i mean I, I do plan next time i go to disney or to orlando it's something i do want to go see the new park because i am having the last time we went to disney we went to typhoon lagoon and blizzard beach and it was the first time i'd ever been um, even though it was like my seventh visit to Disney, it was the first time I went, so now I'm converted. But I just have to walk around with a pair of prescription swimming goggles on so I can see what I'm doing and so I can find my way back to my party. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm, I'm lost. Um, but it definitely looks very interesting. I mean, the fact that Disney have kind of got their, um, the new Miss Adventure Falls, they've also kind of tried out new techniques with the, water, with the magic band there. Um, I just generally feel like this is a kind of a kick up the bum for, for um, Disney's water parks. Yeah, I mean, they have kind of like upped it up. I mean, they do have the return of Frozen Summer Games and Blizzard Beach. And, you know, now you can meet Kristoff and Olaf. Kristoff was a big part of, you know, the Frozen Summer Games, but you mm. couldn't meet him his first year. But now you can. So I feel like that's going to draw a lot of people in. Um, Miss Adventure Falls, I, I mean, I haven't really heard too much about it since it came out, but perhaps I'll hear more during the summertime since, you know, when it came out, it was spring break, so. I mean, I do feel like from Universal's point now of like, you know, for like, for example, like us now looking to book, you know, now you're looking at free parks, now you're looking at, you know, now you need to set, spend a little bit more time, you know, on Universal, which is what they want. They want you to start kind of 
having three, four, five day breaks just about universal. And I think having that third park, while I wouldn't call it a third theme park, it does completely change it to now that though you've now got three days universal, which is something that they really want to kind of crack into just where it used to just be an add on for Disney holidays. Yeah, I agree. I feel like having that third park will definitely alleviate some of the pressure as far as capacity in the parks. I do know, like, this, I mean, this past weekend, Universal had actually set up a hotline where guests could call to see if the park had hit capacity, which, sadly, um, you know, Animal Kingdom did before Pandora, so we were seeing, you know, 300 wait times for them, but I feel like they're doing, as far as guest service, they're doing a great job with Volcano Bay. Um, I feel like it'll be moderately successful. I don't recall if it's going to be open year-round. I don't see why it wouldn't be. No. But, yeah. I mean, I think as well is maybe having just a one water park means they can concentrate on it and they're going to continue to keep investing in it. Um, but it definitely seems interesting that Universal are kind of really going after that, um, what Disney are doing. And I feel like now, like, you know, there's that thing of, you know, you've got the six parks over at Disney and now you've got the three days over at Universal. It definitely is going to creep it in and sort of, Sea World and West Wet and Wild are you know, way down on that list now. Yeah, Sea World came late into the game. Like they really, I mean, with I mean they're they're doing what they should be doing now, but they they started way too late. Like they kind of just caught on like the like the last end of you know how Universal just did it. So I mean I don't even know if it's going to be much help for them, but I mean I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean you've got that whole Aquatica um, water park which you. Don't tend to hear too much about we didn't go last time. Again, it's that situation of if you're there going on a long vacation, you know, you've only got so many so many days, you've only got so much money to spend on tickets. You know, now you've got um, free water parks that are more likely going to be included in your passes. Um, it's going to mean less and less time to do the other stuff. Um, for me, now you're thinking, well, if, you had, if I get like a 14-day ultimate ticket, which we get over here, you know, that includes Disney Universal, that's pretty much the majority of your holiday gone if you have a few water days or a few beach days. You just yeah, don't need to do anything else. You do. That's pretty much going to be a very, very big win for Universal. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like if you're, you know, if you're coming from overseas, that would be beneficial because that would fill up basically your two weeks right there. You get a few days of Universal, a few days of Disney, but then it's like you don't really think of SeaWorld no. because basically you can do all those things at either park, so there's no need for you to go there. No. But I definitely feel like now, you know, you're going to start seeing probably Americans you know, and already, you know, going down for Universal weekends, Universal holidays, rather than doing nothing. Oh, yeah. I, mm, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, I know they've already included Volcano Bay in some events, not Halloween Horror Nights or anything like that. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but it is included in, like, a ticket package for, um, I can't think of the Christian Rock concert that they have every now, like, every yeah. year, but it's up in September. Volcano Bay is included in a ticket package offer that you can do for that, so they've already jump the gun they know they want to include it as much as possible and i know with halloween horror nights coming up that's going to alleviate a lot of pressure for visiting guests too who get their days cut short because of that event and can't attend it mm. so it's definitely i feel like gonna really it's that situation really of like depending on what kind of tickets you've got um as you say you know americans tend to go a little bit shorter there um but as for you you know locals as well as it depends what's in your past passes of what you're doing. Is it included in the Universal Annual Pass? I mean, I personally am going to buy one next month, and I feel like the prices are actually better than Disney's Annual Pass, just mainly because you can put a down payment on it. Yeah. As a, as not, you don't even have to be a Florida resident to do it. You can yeah. be living anywhere, you can put a down payment on it and just pay monthly installments. With Disney, you can't. So I feel like especially as a Florida resident, it's very beneficial, and I know I'm personally going to get one, especially since I know I'm going to be there as frequently as I am at Disney. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it should be a, a kind of a good kind of boost for that area. And like I said, I think as well, if it gives Disney a boost to kind of put some money in, the fact that they've got the new, the new attractions and stuff opening up at, the, at those water parks, it wouldn't surprise me if year on year they start adding more content to those existing water parks. 
I mean, personally, I see it happening within probably late fall, to be honest, because that gives it to be slow, but it also gives them time to update and refurbish and make changes where necessary, too. So, I mean, I feel like Volcano Bay is already a great success. It's going to be fitting just fine with the Universal brand, I feel. Yeah. Well, on that note, guys, um, let us know what you guys are thinking of um, Volcano Bay. Have you been? Are you planning on going? And will this affect um, a time at the water parks in, uh, in the Disney side of things? Let us know your thoughts. As per usual, guys, remember to hit that subscribe button on our new um, This Kingdom YouTube channel as well. And you can find us on all the different audio platforms and stuff. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. So, Victoria, where can they find you? Oh, they can find me on Twitter at he calls me PP and Instagram he calls me Pineapple Princess. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. We shall see you guys soon. Later. Bye.